Hello everybody, I hope you're having a lovely summer and looking forward to the beginning of a new BCC season. I'm very excited to introduce you to two of BCC's newest members of staff. First of all, Kripa Joseph, our new programme coordinator, who's going to be asking some questions from BCC singers to our new executive director, Andres Holder. And I'm going to pass you over now to Kripa with the first of these questions. My name is Kripa Joseph and I am the new program coordinator at Boston Children's Chorus. I started working for BCC in May and I've learned so much in the past couple of months. Even though I've been working remotely, I really enjoy interacting with singers and parents and I can't wait for when we can all safely meet again. Now I'd like to introduce our new executive director, Andres Holder. In his first few months at BCC, Andres has been getting to know the Boston community and we have been getting to know him. To continue with introductions, we have some questions submitted by singers who want to know a little bit about Andres and his life and interests. So Andres, our first question is from Brandon, um, who's from Young Men's Ensemble. Hi, I'm Ryan Garcia from BCC's Young Men's Ensemble. And I have a few questions for Mr. Holder. My first question being is, Mr. Holder, since you're Panamanian, also known as Panamanian in English, what is your favorite part about Panama or its culture? My favorite part of uh, Panamanian culture is certainly the food. It's, um, it's a source of so much pride in my family when we get together and make a whole bunch of different dishes from a whole bunch of different areas in the country. Um, I would have to say my favorite dish that my family and I make is arroz con coco y guandu, which in other parts of Latin America, they call them guandules. So it's a rice made with coconut milk um, and you put pigeon peas in them and it's just the most delicious thing. I try really hard not to make it all the time, but it's just so delicious. So um, yeah, I would definitely have to say the food. That sounds delicious. Thanks. Um, next, we have two questions from sisters Savannah and Francesca, who are both from advanced training. Hi, my name is Francesca, and my question for you is, if you had to stay one place for the rest of your life, where would it be? And my name is Savannah, and my question is, what's your favorite candy? These are tough questions. If I had to stay in one place for my entire life, it would have to be a, it would have to be a cabin, a log cabin, um, somewhere remote, top of a mountain maybe, um, it would have to be a place that gets all four seasons. Um, and it would have to be by a body of water, definitely. So, you know, go swimming in the summer, you know, frozen lake or, or river in the winter and be able to, you know, do winter activities. Um, yeah, I think that would be, I would be very happy in that remote location. Um, and in terms of favorite candy, this is a really difficult one because normally <laughs> if I buy candy, it's two candy bars at the same time. And it's often a Snickers bar and a Twix bar at the same time. I try to buy the fun size one so that I don't go a little too crazy, but it doesn't always work. And sometimes when you need candy, you just get the regular size one and have one of each. I like Snickers too. That's great. It's perfect. <laughs> <laughs> um, here's a question from Leonard, who is from Intermediate. My question for Mr. Holder is, have you heard a funny story or experienced a funny story in an airport? If so, why and how? Oh my goodness, something funny in an airport. Well, I, there was this one time um, I was traveling to Mexico with um, a Panamanian folk dance group that I was a part of in my school. And everyone else in the group got their passport and their Mexican visa in their uh, passport on time, and I didn't. So I had to travel on my own um, to Mexico City. Um, I, two things happened on that trip that I thought were exceptional. Um, since I was traveling alone from Panama to Mexico as an underage person, um, the flight crew decided that instead of putting me in coach where my ticket was, that I should fly in first class so they could keep a closer eye on me. So that was pretty awesome. It was my first time flying first class and it was unbelievable. Um, the seat was like extremely large and super comfy. 
Um, the second part of that that I was really excited about, and this is 12 year old me, um, I got to the Mexican airport and I couldn't leave because the group needed to come pick me up. So it was a whole logistical thing. Um, but I remember having for the first time in my life, a little bit of cash in my pocket and I had to eat something because I was waiting for the group. So I went and bought Cinnabon and I had never had it ever before. And it was the most delicious thing. So I was sitting on the floor of the Mexican airport in Mexico de Efe, just eating Cinnabon and living my best life. It was so much fun. <laughs> So you're 12 years old. Yep, I was 12 years old. Wow. So a potentially nerve-wracking situation was actually pretty exciting. It was great. I had my Cinnabon, so everything was fine in the world. <laughs> That's great. Thanks for sharing. All right, our final question is another one from Brandon. My second question for Mr. Holder is, Mr. Holder, why did you want to come work in Boston, Massachusetts? Is it any similar or different than Washington, D.C., where you used to work? Thank you. That's a really good question. I think Boston and DC have a lot of history um, based on their geography and the kind of the, the, the role that those cities have played in history, which makes them really rich cultural cities to live in. Um, I think they both also have this um, group of people that moves through the town um, in these different cycles. You know, in DC it's based on politics and, and the government and all the people moving in and out of the city in Boston is academia that's you know pushing and pulling people through um, and I think they're they're similar in that way but I'm really really excited to get to know Boston as people as communities kind of the the the, the people that make Boston what it is that that essence of it um, uh, I think it's I think it's gonna be a change I think it's gonna be you know in, in any city you have to just learn the ways of the city and I'm really excited to get to, to see it all and experience it all in a really deep and meaningful way. Thank you so much, Andres. Um, and thank you to our singers for submitting questions and we hope you enjoy getting to know Mr. Holder a little bit more. Mm -hmm.